Rough Turn Bowl from March 2016. Hello, yes, and welcome to another video, rolling out thick and fast, as thick and fast as my lustrous locks. Right, enough of that. Yeah, a bit of oak. Um, can't remember where it came from. Been knocking around for a long time, and I'm going to completely destroy it with texture and colour, because I'm in that kind of mood. Hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, if you're new here, like, share, subscribe. Right, um, probably going to have to return that foot a little bit, but we'll see. See how we get on. See it wobbling around. There we go, dovetail done. And quite out of round. Now, what I'm going to focus on first is getting this tenon sorted out. Don't want to make it too small, but it's probably a little bit too deep at the moment. That is 59. Now, the C jaws like to really work in a 56 spigot against a little flat now I quite like the shape that I had so I'm going to try to keep that and I'm trying to cut the same depth round. Now you can hear the juddering because it's not true. And my feet are in completely the wrong position for me to finish this cut. So I'm going to reposition my feet and reposition the tool rest. See it's cutting quite nicely but up here it's not cut but we've got Quite a lot of movement, as you can see. A little bit of unevenness in some parts. Now, I appreciate not everyone has a Proxon long neck grinder, but you can still do a fair bit of texturing with a bit of a sandpaper on a reasonably firm head and a, and a power drill. Right, let's make dust. Right, colouring time. A bit of uh there's the camera one. A bit of red spirit stain. It's probably going to react with the metallic paint in this little pot. But that's only going to add a little bit more sparkle. So you don't have to have an airbrush to put stain on. And just going Rather haphazard and wavy. Some yellow spirit stain now. Splashing that into another unit pop. And I'm going to take some red. 
and mix that in. So I've got both colours mixed up a little bit. You see that different colour going on. Bit of the red back. And then just building up this nice mixture of red and orange. Quite like where it runs a little bit actually. So I've just got a bit of yellow in here and going to try not to contaminate it too much. You can see the yellow is looking a little murky because of the tannin in the oak and the colour of the oak that will react and change the colour. It's starting to fill in all of the wood now. And in my head, this is what's needed. In my head, hmm, strange place to be. Getting nicely covered all of the wood, right up to the foot and even over the foot. That's not too much of a problem. A bit of a solid area of yellow there, but that won't last long. Very solid area of yellow here. Sort of going for a medley of autumn leaves. It's a common uh, motif in the colouring that I've done before. Might need a little bit more yellow. Definitely to get this over. Right. Next stage of the colouring, try and combine it, blend it together. I'm going with a few, a little wipe with a bit of cloth with just yellow on. And if you take a look at the bit of paper in a moment, you'll see how Not only has it gone on my fingers, but it's made a nice, well, not too badly on my fingers. I think that's making, taking away some of the harsher edges of the colour transformations or transitions. And it looks dull at the moment. Remember, we haven't got a finish on. The finish will make a lot of difference. And it's actually very tactile, this sort of textured bottom. I'll keep my hands off it. Okay, so I've got a foam brush, inch and a half, in old money. It's quite stiff. And wiping it off on the edge. Running a bit out of room. Let's come back to the overhead. That is awful. That's better. That was clearly a mistake. We're going to have to go back and do some more work. Tempted to leave it though. And get some yellow in there. Now it's a very nice get out actually, putting black on and then sanding back because. It allows you to put colour onto bare wood, but be framed with the black in a way that people think, well, golly, that's a lot of very accurate painting that's had to go on there. Whereas, as you can see, <laughs> accuracy was the very last thing on, on my mind. Right, maybe one or two areas here 
could probably have taken off a little bit more. I don't think I've got any colours left in these other ones. So a little bit of red. Let's just have a look. Maybe a couple of areas where the red can be blended in a little. On that yellow. Dab it around a little. Time for a little bit of sanding sealer now. Now, the stain is not has not had a long time to dry, so this is going to lessen. It's going to move it a little bit. Okay. So one thin coat, making sure I've covered all of it. And it's a little rough in places, so it could have done with a bit of more loving surface preparation. But there we go, there's the first coat of lacquer. Here we come with the next coat of lacquer. And here we are with coat number three. Right, the lacquer has now been drying for um, a whole day. There are one or two areas where it is a little bit um, dull. And that appears mostly to be around the areas of, of end grain. It's always a bit hit and miss lacquering in cold, wet weather. So I don't really recommend it. But I'm going to crack on because I can come back and fix that another time. I think on the overhead camera you might be able to see a bit more the dull area here um, but in terms of getting a project finished um, it's, I'm not going to let it stop me okay. now I'm going to change these for sea jaws although there's there's a similar width here, there's not as much depth and I want the face of the jaws to sit on here and at the moment if I go on the overhead camera you can see I hope that there is a gap, that gap here so that means that the jaws are only contacting the bottom and there's nothing to stop that kind of force at work on them if the front of the jaw was hitting that flat part here then it would be much more secure. So bear with me while I change my jaws. Number two. Number three. And number four. Now these are much deeper jaws. So we should see when they start gripping that tenon that also hitting the flat that I've put on there so there is now no gap between the jaws and the bottom of the bowl. Just nibbling away. Now I've really rather speeded over the finishing of this. Uh, you may be seeing lots of other videos showing the of a bowl. Uh, this didn't have an awful lot of uh, turning to be completed um, as it had been rough turned before, four years ago. A 3 8 bowl gouge and then a scraper just to finalise the, the curve on the inside. A little bit of sanding and how much sanding do you want to see? Have you seen enough yet? Is that enough? Probably, probably that's enough. 
Yes. Oh, few. Yes, that was enough. Normal finish, um, which is the chestnut cut and polish, sanded to 240 grit and then used the this abrasive wax as he also a finish of sorts puts a puts a wax finish on and i normally finish that with a micro crystalline wax over the top as well and uh as the lacquer had been a little less than spectacularly successful i got out some old buffings uh, buffing compound and uh did some buffing on the outside working up through three three different compounds and that managed i think to rescue some of the poor lacquering um, and put a shine on it because as well as it feeling nice um, with the texture i wanted it to have a little bit of shine as well and here's one of my latest toys my 14 inch longworth chuck um saves saves having to hatch off a little nub you can of course uh just friction mount that against a um a round disc on a face plate or something with the with the live center um and then clean it up by hand but it's i i like this new little gadget i've got as you can see i can leave it in the chuck and just remove that little nub after i've moved the live center out of the way and then a bit more sanding to watch boring oh that's and yes a little bit of wax on the bottom after this was sanded i just did a little bit of wood wax 22 on the outside of that. So here it is all finished. And I have to say, I am a big fan of oak. Really do love that grain and the medullary rays and the little flecks you get in there. It's a lovely warm colored wood as well. And it feels so reassuringly strong. Okay, enough waxing lyrical about the oak. What about what I've done to the outside? Um, generally pleased. Um, having to live with the fact that uh, not ideal lacquering conditions in the shed at the moment. So um, come springtime, I might have to do a little bit of repair work. But there'll be, there'll be some still images uh, showing the colouring in a bit better detail than you can see here. Rather a dark view of it. Um, and I love the feel of it. I wish you could feel it. Put your hand in the screen and give it a good stroke. But unfortunately you can't so you'll have to take the expression of pleasure on my face as proof that it feels very nice in the hand and uh on that note until next time thanks for watching It does feel nice.